system of part distance learning as previously announced. Orange County education leaders, meanwhile, last night voted for schools to reopen in the fall and for individual school districts to decide for themselves whether masks should be mandated. And California Attorney General Javier Becerra has revoked access to records generated by the LAPD for the CalGang database. The LAPD recently placed a moratorium on the use of CalGang after an internal audit uncovered significant misuse of the system. Criminal charges have been filed against three LAPD officers accused of falsifying records that claimed people they had stopped were gang members or gang associates. Support our progressive journalism by donating at kpfk.org today. Tune into the KPFK News tonight at 6.15 for more. to Transforming Consciousness. I am your host, Vanessa Valdez. Thank you for tuning in in Southern California and all over the continent. Today's show is part of the series I've created on Transforming Consciousness through Partnership. However, today's special theme will be focused on reconnecting to the highest aspect of oneself through divorce. For those interested in working with me one-on-one for intuitive coaching sessions through Zoom, you can email me at transformingconsciousness at kpfk.org. You can also follow me on Instagram under Transforming Consciousness to stay up to date with future shows. Our special guest for today is Lee Keckner. She is a podcaster, author, speaker, spiritual teacher, and divorce coach with a master's degree in spiritual psychology. She's also the executive producer on the Mindfulness Movement film with Deepak Chopra. She is here to teach us how to reconnect to the highest aspect of oneself through divorce by inviting all listeners to tune in. So whether you are going through a divorce or thinking about getting a divorce, or perhaps you are divorced and still suffering, or maybe you have a friend or a family member that you know of that you feel that this show can support them. Or perhaps you are someone ready to heal and release from upbringing programming pertaining to divorce. Lee is an expert on the topic of divorce and will be educating us further in ways that will provide you clarity, understanding, and a deep sense of surrender. But before we bring her on air, we will begin with a brief meditation to center our time together so that we may be more open during the show. If you are driving, it is recommended that you tune in after the meditation has come to completion in two minutes. Sit in a comfortable position, keeping your back straight to align the chakra column. Take a deep breath in. Exhale. We will begin. We call ourselves forward. We ask. We ask that any fear, frustration, imbalance, restriction, limitation, any repressed feelings, any barrier that we built against the awareness of who we truly are, be released and taken into the higher realms of consciousness. We ask. We ask that we be grounded and protected by our spirit guides that are present in service to us. May this show bring you a deep sense of surrender. Let us now. Let us now focus into the stillness of our awareness with the intention of fully receiving the message during our time together, knowing that we are in the presence of love and we embrace this energy wherever we go. 
moments of silence to bring you back into your body. You are listening to Transforming Consciousness. I am your host, Vanessa Valdez. Today, our special guest is Lee Keckner. She's a podcaster, author, speaker, spiritual teacher, and divorce coach with a master's degree in spiritual psychology. She's also the executive producer on the Mindfulness Movement film with Deepak Chopra. She is here to teach us how to reconnect to the highest aspect of oneself through divorce. Lee, it's such an honor to have you join the conversation. Vanessa, I love that whole introduction and the meditation, and I'm grounded as heck and ready to get to it. Awesome. Well, I'm excited to hear that. And again, it's an honor to have you join KPFK through Transforming Consciousness. I would love for you to begin, Lee, by having you share with the listeners what we call the dark night of the soul, which is essentially that story and experience of your life that may have been at the time very dark and challenging but nevertheless ended up being the beacon of light to inspire you to where you are now. And this would be in resonance to partnership and your experience with that. Well, if you don't mind, I would love to say that I'm going to focus on one today, but I just want to say to the listeners, I have so many dark nights of the soul and so many things that I have learned from them and how they have catapulted me forward in such a beautiful way. And my most recent dark night of the soul was really bone crushing. Actually, it was my most painful thing I've gone through because when I met my beloved, David Keckner, I met him in Kansas City at an airport terminal. And I remember that my brother saved him a seat on the plane because it was one of the airlines where you just got letters or something. And my brother was a fan of his because he had been on television, but I didn't know that. I just thought he was cute. So he sits near us. And then he asked my brother if they could switch seats. And it was the first time I looked into someone's eyes and I felt complete peace and at home. Now, I was a wild ass before that running crazy in Hollywood, making out and getting drunk and carrying on. And when I looked in his eyes, I felt a peace come over me. And I was 30 years old and I was like, I'm done. You're here. I've been waiting for you for so long. I didn't say any of that, of course, because I was scared the heck out of him, but I had a deep knowing this was my man. So my story that we're going to be talking about today is that that 22-year marriage with five kids and the great run that we had. And when I got into the marriage business, I was holding a belief that marriage can always work out if people try hard enough. Mm. And even me saying those words now, because I don't believe any longer in the word hard, and I do not welcome that into my vocabulary or my life, because the universe conspires to meet us where we are. And if we say this is going to be hard, the universe sets up obstacle courses. So I like to say, I'm going to move through this with grace and ease. Now, that is not how I started my divorce process, because my husband, something went down in the last five years of our marriage where... I kept trying to save and to fix and hold everyone together. And I did this for five years, but you can't save and fix someone who doesn't want to be saved or fixed. Right. But I had to get so worn out and so off my path. And it's interesting when you're married so often because it's the day-to-day stuff you're going through. It's kind of gray matter. It's not like you're out observing yourself going, oh, look at myself as suffering. Look at my human self is going through this difficult time, you're just all human when you're in it. When you're kind of in something that's really dark and painful and you're experiencing the pain. So I would say experience pain from kind of what was happening, the unraveling of our marriage for five years. And there was a lot of crying and mourning and grieving. So by the time it came time in February 2019 for me to ask him to leave the house because it was no longer okay for him to be here with me and the kids. And he left and I, we had just decided to do a podcast together. And I came back to our new podcast set in our guest house 
And I laid down and I was just bawling and bawling and bawling. Like my body hurt so bad, like literally like it had been shattered, like my heart had been ripped out. Mm. And I was just laying there crying. And then I was like, gosh, I've been crying for so long. Like I've been crying for five years and I kind of disconnected from people over the years and just focusing on saving this, but lost a lot of my beautiful connections with people kind of got super lost in the gray matter. And I remember after he left, I was just laying in the guest house bawling. And I was like, oh my gosh, it got to a point where I was like, wow, I might be cried out. I mean, cause I felt the pain, right? I didn't hold it. You know, I wept every day. I had to release it and let it out of my body. And I did so for five years. And I remember the day I said, I think I'm cried out. Mm. And I stood up and I looked down at the ground. I looked for the foundation, the belief I was holding that my life was built on, which was being David Keckner's wife and being this family till the day I died. And that was gone. And I just remember going, oh, wait, but my feet are standing. I'm still planted on the earth without that what I thought was my foundation, I'm still standing. And I literally felt my way up my body to my shoulders, my head. And I looked up at God and I said, Oh, God, I'm ready. Use me to be of service in a way that I couldn't have done if I stayed David Keckner's wife. And in that moment, I feel like I moved from powerlessness, I moved from pain into curiosity. Mm. I moved from when we started mediation from being a victim. I don't know anything about money. I've never done it. My dad did it. My husband did it. I don't know anything. Two, this is a wonderful opportunity for me to learn about money. Absolutely. And I'm really excited about this because it's the first time in my life that I've had a dark night, that I've had a kick in the stomach, that I've had a bone shattering experience where I moved from the pain, which I believe you must feel and grieve and feel all of it. Don't hold any of it. That I let it all flow out. And that I made a choice. I set a mindset of curiosity and opening my mind and heart to learn new things. And eventually to get back to loving that man that I originally fell in love with, knowing our relationship had run its course but that that was the guy that I loved and I will forever. And having that softening changed my whole outlook on divorce, my whole life. It healed my body within that had been suffering and hurting. And it has created a space for my soon to be ex to come in a more loving way to me because I allowed a new way of being. So it's been one of the biggest blessings of my life and I'm not even finished with mediation. Wow. Well, I... I'm just, I'm at awe with what you've shared with me and to the listeners as well, because as you were sharing, I could literally see you in this tunnel. Nevertheless, there's that light at the end of the tunnel, but you delved us into that journey of walking with you. And then all of a sudden you're on the other side. So it's really amazing just to hear you and not just hear you, but also the embodiment of what you're sharing that you've experienced it, that you've embodied it, and that you continue to be open to that light, that inner voice. You mentioned God. So I'm understanding, you know, that you believe in God and that guidance of God. So for the listeners that are tuned in right now, because when it comes to divorce, there's so much programming around, you know, what does it really represent? And so there's a lot of what I'm perceiving as failure, And there's a lot of people right now that are listening that may will still be in their marriages, but they're scared. They're afraid. I just want to jump onto that. That's such a great point. First of all, any belief that I hold, God lets me experience it so I can shatter that belief. Mm. So I remember I had thoughts about divorce. I had when people got divorced, I thought they didn't work hard enough. Like if they really tried, they could have made it right And so God put me through it. So I realized, oh, wow, God, I need to quit having judgment over anyone for anything because you bring it to me in such a way, such a strong, powerful, tangible way for me to experience it that I keep coming back to, I will never judge anyone on their path, on their work with God, no matter how different it looks from mine, they're doing exactly what they need to do. And it's really melted my heart on judgment. 
because I've been put through everything I've ever judged. And I realized like, even I was raised very Catholic and my dad was like, abortion is murder. And I held that thought. But when I grew up, I thought, you know, I support every woman, what they want to do, but I still consider that a human being. And so there was a wrong attached to it. And then we got pregnant with our fifth child. And the doctor said, your baby has a neurological disorder. She'll never walk. Her brain stopped growing. So she won't even be one day old. You're going to have to move her for every day, atrophy her legs. It's going to drain your marriage, all of your money, and you're not going to be able to take care of your other children. And they, all the specialists kept saying, and I saw it on the screen, everything that was wrong with her and, and visually as well. And they kept saying, you know, the most gracious, beautiful thing you could do is terminate. And it was the first time that my husband and I considered termination. I called my minister and he said, God's created things to keep people from suffering. Like all of medicine it can be valued. Does she need to come here and suffer and not know who you are? And leaving the door open for us. And then my nanny at the time was married to Jesus. That was her, what she said. <laughs> I'm married to Jesus. I don't need anyone. I was like, all right. And then I was like, hey, they're telling me to terminate. And she said, oh, let that baby go to God now. Let her go. So I had all of these messages supporting it. I was trying anything to stop it. And my husband and I talked about it and we really got into it. And I was so happy I had that option, although we chose not to do it. I was so happy I had an option or a choice. And I had such a tenderness for anyone put in any situation that I haven't experienced, that they have options that are right for them. So it's just everything that dark nights strip away all judgment and just open my heart to complete understanding and compassion. Absolutely. Complete understanding and compassion. Now, I will tell you, Lee, because you mentioned it earlier and you mentioned it again, so it's, it's staying with me. The energy is still there. When you talk about, you know, marriage can always work out if we try hard enough. Absolutely. That's the programming that so many people out there are still living by unconsciously. So on that and it's note, not true. and it's not true, right, which what we are going to be delving those that are tuned in around, what does it mean when it's not true? So when it comes to marriage, you know, there's still this irrational belief around it constitutes to failure. So let's talk about what you've mentioned, you know, let's talk about that guilt. Let's talk about that blame and how it shows up in the midst of divorce, in the midst of marriage, and how can people remove themselves, release themselves from that energy? And why is it so important to be able to? Well, first of all, when you're in the pain of it, everything's overwhelming and new because it's all happening for the first time in your life. And it's nothing you ever thought you would experience. So you're kind of in this really wild upset. And an interesting thing about people are, they love when people are in upset and turmoil, and they gossip about it. And they, in this thing, started choosing sides. Now, I was bewildered because David and I hadn't even chosen our sides, and we were navigating it fresh. But people outside were like, well, I've known Dave longer, so we're going to only invite him now and not Lee. And I've been going to that person's house for 20 years for whatever the event was. And I just remember feeling like it's so interesting when you feel so low and you're going through something so painful and there is so much judgment attached how people love it and thrive on it if they're in low level energy. Because I was so hurt or I chose to have hurt feelings over it, not now, but at the time, because everything was so raw, that how could they not even see what we're going through and how hard it is for David and I, but how they're adding on top of that by excluding me. Like there's such deep pain and betrayal and all of these things that come along with the simple shattering thought that you've held your whole life, you're supposed to stay together. So it's really this giant ugly cake that you have a fork in your hand and you're told to eat and you're like, I don't want to eat this, but you're hungry. <laughs> you know, it's this weird, <laughs> it's this right. weird thing. And, you know, when you're in it, you're in it. But the second you can take a breath, the second you can take a pause and you can know that there's many different facets of yourself. And we have this mind that is human and limited, but we're also connected to all that is to the universe. So when we can stop for a second and kind of rise up as the observer, right? You know, sometimes you can observe yourself when you're in the car, you're like, 
I can't believe I'm just thinking these thoughts right now. Why am I thinking these thoughts? That's the observer of our mind, you know, that we have these separate parts of us to allow yourself to kind of rise above and look at yourself. And I remember the first time I did that, I had such compassion for me. Hmm. And I was like, you need to be taken care of and loved. Who's taking care of you? precious thing. And then I was reminded, oh, I'm the only one who can refill me. I'm the only one, meaning directly connected to God, right? Because when we're partnered with power, we're unstoppable, even if we think we're not. But just having awareness that the universe is inside of me, and that I can stop my crazy ass spinning brain. And something else you said about this is, I always tell people divorce sucks but you don't have to suffer. Absolutely. And that's my biggest thing I've gotten from this. I skipped the suffering. I went from pain to curiosity, looking at what I added to the relationship to bring it down, pinpointing things that I did where I railroaded over him when he really just needed to be heard. And so I see all of these things and I'm making note of them so I can work on them, even while I'm dealing with them now to really listen. He deserved to be heard. But a pattern I was taught when I was younger, because if my mom told on me and my dad got home from work, he would beat the crap out of me with a belt, calling it a spanking, but it went on way too long and up my back and it was painful. And so I remember my dad would go, Lee, and I'd say, dad, listen, wait, you have to listen to my point. So when my ex would say, Lee, I need to talk to you about this. I could tell he was mad. I would jump over him, try and take control to avoid the pain that's coming. That's not a response as an adult to my love. That was an old response as a childhood kind of protection. So I started realizing what I did to contribute so I can work on that because I'm not bringing that into another relationship. Amen. And to become conscious of that, it really does take courage because that's the stepping stone to be aware of your side of the story instead of playing the victim. I will tell you, it is beyond powerful when you mention from pain to suffering, which is what we've been programmed to be in unconsciously, to pain to curiosity, to become curious about the world, the experience, the journey, the relationship, the partnership. When I read your website, what really stayed with me was that quote around pain is inevitable, suffering is optional. Would you like to elaborate for those that are still right now as they're tuned in, they're hearing you, they're feeling the words, and they're still suffering? So guys, here's the deal. Life can be painful. Life can be joyous, happy, fun, everything, a big ass adventure with all kinds of stuff wrapped up in it. So we know pain is coming. We know we're going to have painful events. We know we're going to have painful financial things right now with what's happening in the pandemic. We know all of these. We know people are going to die. We know everything is impermanent. So we know everything will change. Everything will be new. Our body changes every day. We're not the same human being we were when we were young. So I love just embracing that change is inevitable. And if you're experiencing pain, feel it. Stay in it as long as you need to cry, punch a pillow, talk to a therapist, let it flow through you. We are meant to feel pain, not to hold it and not to ride it. So feel it and cry and find in your body where it aches and cry and then put loving to that place in your body with your hands over your heart and your eyes closed. Just say, I got you. You're okay. We're going to get through this. Always coming back to yourself, knowing that you can have your own self is so free and easy and comforting. We don't need to look outside of ourself, although outside support is so great to to support us. But yeah, I just think that feel the pain, but realize once you felt it, there's a whole world out there that you're about to learn anew if you hadn't experienced that pain. Now, here's what suffering means to me. Suffering means whatever the painful event was is no longer happening, but you're choosing to spin over it over and over, and your body is hurting. Your body immune system's going down. You're out of the present moment. You're starting to cause depression. Like all of these low-level energy things, because you're holding a thought of something that's no longer happening. Now, thoughts aren't real. 
thoughts come and go and we get 70,000 crazy thoughts a day, most are negative. So this thought, you're holding it so tight like you're holding a hot coal and you're getting burned, but no one else is suffering but you. So feeling the pain, realizing it happened for a reason, although it still hurts, and jumping into the curiosity. And every time you choose suffering, like, I can't believe this happened to me. I'm tired now of this. What now? Right? Take a breath and go, oh, no, 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 no. That's suffering. No, thank you. Let me take the opposite. Let me flip that mindset. This is showing up again. Let me look at this. Let me dive in. Let me swim. Let me investigate it. Let me feel all of it because I want to heal this. And I want to release it forever. I don't want this to be a part of my story. We come with stories from generations before and we live them and we pass them on. But when you're awake and you have awareness, you can break the cycle of your family's history forever. So I never beat anyone which I broke that for my family. And my mom was always in bed because she was mentally ill. I'm out of bed. So I broke those two things that I was taught. And then I realized every day being aware and present, there's so much more. So Mm. it's like, for me, life is just a magical field of observing. When I am in victim mode, what does that attract? How do I feel? How is that being of service to me? It's not. If I flip that and think, I'm going to learn from this. How did I add to this? How can I love myself in a new way? How can I be open my mind and heart from this instead of closing off and choosing suffering? Suffering's a choice. Pain is always going to happen. Absolutely. Two separate things. Two separate things. And what's coming through, Lee, as you're sharing when it comes to divorce of what I'm understanding, to be able to use divorce to improve our lives through the gain, not the loss. Because again, loss goes into that suffering, right? The suffering and the victimization, but to see really the gain of the journey. And on that note, Lee, for those that are tuned in, whether they're in marination or they know of someone that they could perhaps you know, share this show with that somehow it can be a beacon of light for them, your words, at what point in a marriage would you say that divorce actually makes sense? Oh, great question. Here's what I know now. My old thought was you can work it out if you try hard enough, which hurts my body to even say. So what I know now is when two people are in partnership, walking forward on the same path, It is fixable. You're still moving forward together. The moment one person sits down, the moment you are moving and the other one stopped, you are no longer equally yoked. You are no longer partners. You are no longer moving forward on the same plan. The relationship has run its course. And I hear time and time again that people say, we're staying together for the kids and my insides ache. For their children, because we are modeling what their marriage should look like. They're learning from us. If you're in a loveless marriage and you think you're keeping it together for the kids, your kids are suffering and you're modeling for them how not to live in your joy and happiness, which is the opposite of what we want for our kids. If you are in a marriage that somebody has been abusive to you or spoken to you in a verbally abusive way, You attracted that. Here's the strange thing is we attract our partners where we are. And if we feel like this victim, we're going to attract a bully and our energies are going to meet, right? Because we're filling what the other person needs in a low level energy. Right. As you take care of yourself, as you fill yourself with love, you start attracting people who are full of love and doing good. And it's just really neat to take ownership that you're 100% responsible for your time, your experience on the planet. So there's something you don't like, go with them and tweak it. Take care of yourself, heal it so you can show up in a new way and attract like-minded people. Mm, Wow. (laughs) That could easily put me to tears because what's coming through for me, Lee, and again, this goes for the listeners that are tuned in, you don't necessarily have to be going through a divorce. And so I can only use my example, but I haven't been married yet. But what you're sharing, the reason it's really resonating with me, because it's taking me back to the old programming of my own upbringing, right, around Mm -hmm. marriage and divorce and how that was mimicked into my life later on. 
and how mm-hmm. it had an impact on me and the triggers and so on and so forth. So for those that are tuned in, you don't necessarily have to be in your situation, right? Or where you were. However, to know that there's always a healing opportunity as it is for me right now, just to listen to you. You know, what you're saying is right. I was so moved by what I learned with myself that I created this online program. And someone who took it said to me, I'm going to take, there's six pillars to it. I'm just going to say them really quick because they're so important. Because this girl said to me, I'm taking what I learned from that. And this is my stepping stones to peace and happiness, regardless of what life brings. And that's exactly what it was for me. And I will be using this moving forward for everything that I encounter for my highest learning and growing. But the six pillars that I cover are feel the pain and the grief, number one. Number two, find your tribe. And I really had to find my tribe after this because I really lost all the other people kind of in the couples arena. Number three is self-care and setting up a daily practice of self-care. Number four is ownership, owning your to a happy life, owning your part 100%. And then my spiritual perspective is number five. And number six is rise and soar. But if I could do really quick, Vanessa, about number five, because it's my spiritual perspective on my marriage. And this is what healed me and got me in deep gratitude for my husband is that when I met my husband, I had very low self-esteem because I thought I didn't matter because my mom wouldn't get out of bed. And I lived that story from seven to 30 until I met my husband, running fast, drinking a lot, staying solo, not being vulnerable and intimate with anyone. And then I met my husband And literally he held my ankle while I flopped around and got drunk and tried to pick fights. And then after he picked me up when I was too tired and said, let's go get help. And we went to a therapist and she said, Lee, can I see you by yourself? And I went back for two years and I had to double up twice a week just to get through 30 years of not crying. And David's unconditional love for me set me on my journey to healing and to spirituality and to opening and to always ascending. And then when our relationship spiritually ran its course, David sat down and I still tried to pull him up. Get up here, honey. It's beautiful up here. He sat down. And then when I wouldn't get it, he went down so far down a dark hole that I couldn't see him or even feel movement when I tried to pull him up. So literally he went so low, I had to sever the thought that I was spending the rest of my life with him. So I could really be set free to do what God had intended for me to do on the planet. And so I'm in deep gratitude for his sacrifice. I'm in deep gratitude for his unconditional love. And he was the perfect spiritual partner for me to learn from and to grow and to soar. Mm, That's just absolutely beautiful the way you've been able to convey it to all of us. And it brings me into... I thought of the word celebration, you know, and again, Mm -hmm. we're so used to celebrating the initiation into marriage with a wedding. Why is it important to also be able to celebrate the completion of it through divorce? And I'm curious to ask you, how are you being in that energy? Beautiful points. And you know how I think about divorce? Divorce is a life changing event, like graduating from college, your first job, your first baby. It's just another phase of life because everything is impermanent. And if divorce becomes part of your story, it's just another playing field. It's like, oh my gosh, wait a second. Let me get this straight. Yes, I hurt. Yes, I contributed. Yes, I'm learning. But wait a second. I'm standing on a wide open playground right now. I have never been clearer in my life what I want. I've never been healthier. I've actually never looked better than I do right now at 54 years old. And I see nothing but light in front of me. And I know God's got some big ass stuff coming for me. And I'm wide open to receive it. And I'm moving forward on my path to greet it. So to me, divorce is painful, learning, and growing and soaring. Because the things that are coming to me right now with this perspective are telling me that my beliefs are true. The people who are coming to me to work with me to create and expand my company. It's unbelievable. And I never would have done it without David's help of catapulting me forward. So I think divorce is, now that you say it, you know what I'm going to have once it's okay to have people over? 
I'm going to have a divorce party. Yes. And I'm going to ask everyone to bring me something feminine and pink for my home. (laughs) I love it. Yeah, because it is a celebration. I had 22 good years. I wrote it. I was in it. I learned from it. We have five kids together. We're going to be friends forever because of that, whether he knows it or not yet. Mm. But it's just an exciting time of freedom and exploration. And I'm, I'm just forever grateful that I get to have this opportunity. That's beautiful, Lee. And I'll tell you, for those that are tuned in right now, I'm feeling the energies intuitively of if they are in that position or have been or in in the marination of whether you're going from separation to divorce or you're thinking about it or you're in the midst of it, thinking, oh my, how can I get to where she is? Like I'm listening to her, it's resonating with me, but they're still in that pain. They're still in that resentment. They're still in that struggle. And everything that you're sharing with us in my understanding is you're pretty much saying divorce helps you to reconnect with your true self, which is essentially the theme of the show. So for those that are tuned in, that they like what they're hearing, but for now, it's just more like concepts like, no, okay, that sounds interesting. That sounds like where I want to be. I want to be where she is. How can those listeners be where you are? Where, Where can they begin? Where can they start? I think the biggest life changer, the biggest game changer is awareness. Because if you're in it and you're feeling the pain, your life is very painful right now. By the way, if you're going through divorce, it should be painful because you're literally cutting deep ties from your body. You're literally mourning all of the things that you knew were going to come that are no longer going to come. All of the beliefs and thoughts you were holding. There's so many layers to letting go. But I would say now just giving yourself a pause, allowing some awareness, separate yourself from your spinning crazy brain that wants to hold you down and cry constantly and allowing yourself a breath. As you create a pause and you create a breath and you start becoming aware, there's more playing space for something new. You want to create a little space for you to consider a new direction, to consider a new thought, to consider a mindset flip. But you can't do it when you're swimming in the same pond. You have to make a little room on the side, a little levee right between that and the next one. Right. So I think just having awareness is huge and taking a breath. Breathing is our biggest gift when we focus on it because our bodies are automatically breathed. When we focus on our breath, our mind stops spinning because it can't do both at the same time. Absolutely. And I've heard you talk about, Lee, about this whole idea of the shifting, right? The shifting the mindset. So in this case, what I'm understanding, going from pain to power, from anger to love. Could you elaborate more? Because sometimes we have people that tune in halfway. You know, it comes into that repetition. It's like when you chant, it's like repeating over with the intention of somehow in there with your words, something can stay with the listeners as they continue in their journey. Yes, great. Two things. One, we can create new neural pathways in our brains up until the day we die. And how we do that is we have a new thought and we stick for it. 30 days, the new neural pathway starts. If you do it over, it solidifies. It's like if you drive the same way to work every day and one day you decide to go a different route and you go that for 30 days, your mind knows that's your new route. So just having that awareness that we are never stuck. I am who I am. This is how I am. Oh, no. We are able to change up our brains the minute we decide. So here's something I would encourage our listeners to do. Write down their pain thought. Write down their victim thought. I can't do this. I don't know how to be on my own. For whatever they're going through in life, by the way, not just divorce. I feel alone. I feel afraid. I right? Write down the thought, I can't do this. And then draw a line down the paper and write opposing thought, right? Or opposite action, whatever you want to call it. So one is current thought, opposite thought, opposite action, and then put, I can't do it. I can do it. And then write down one way you could do it. I'm alone. And then wrote, I am not alone. And write down one way you can support that thought by reaching out to someone, by getting therapy, by checking in with yourself, by meditating. So take your thought, 
write it down, which means it gets out of your head and you see it in the real world. Look at it. I am alone. Well, actually, you can never be alone because you're directly connected to God, whether you decide to tap into that or not, you are. We're all connected. That's why I love people with all of my heart. When I look at them, I'm looking at my brothers and sisters because as I do, it allows other people to, too. And all I want to do is spread love. So if you get it out of your head, write it down. Write the opposing thought. And one thing that you can do to support it, right there, you're already creating a new neural pathway. Pick your favorite one and say it every day for 30 days or do whatever the action is for 30 days. I always do everything for 33 to solidify. Okay. So I would just challenge them that one step, write down your lie, write down your bullshit thought. I'm sorry if I can't cuss, but I felt like I needed to <laughs> write down the lie because thoughts aren't real. They're things you hold from the past. Worry is ridiculous because you're doing something that doesn't even exist. So people are missing their life, which is all we got is the present moment with you and I right now, Vanessa. Right. Yes. There's nothing else exists but this. Mm -hmm. The second we start grabbing on a thought, we're suffering and we're telling ourselves lies that aren't happening now. And that's suffering. So write down your lie. I'm alone. Draw a line and write down. I'm not alone. One step that you could do to support that. That's amazing. It's so perfect in terms of divinely orchestrated timing with what you're sharing and what we're experiencing as a collective, because, you know, you'll hear more than before, oh, I'm isolated, I'm in lockdown. And so for me, I've been thinking, how about we're incubated? It's like when you're in the cocoon, right? And you're spiraling because you're going through that transformation in the darkness that needs to take place within that darkness, because it's needed. It's part of the journey. And eventually it opens up and you can fly over the horizon, but it's like spiritual bypassing. We cannot skip those steps. We need to be able to be in that. I do agree about sometimes cocooning and then breaking free and becoming a new, better, beautiful butterfly. But I will have to say, isolation is torture. They use it in war. They use it in prisons. It's the number one way to torture a human being because we are made to connect and to touch and to support each other. I have a deep compassion right now for people who live alone because I was walking down my street and I saw this woman I'd never seen. She was kind of limping, 75-year-old gal. And she was walking down my street and I just said, I see you from my driveway. And she turned. It was kind of right when the people were starting to even walk with masks on. And she put her hand on her heart. She said, thank you. And then I knew I was supposed to go interact with her. And I walked out to the street by her. And I said, tell me about you. What's going on? And she said, well, I live alone. I'm 75. I'm part of the church choir, so we rehearse on Wednesdays and we sing on Sundays. And on Mondays, I have my bridge club, but I don't have any of that now. And I have no connection and I don't have a computer. And I just feel, and she was just sharing it. And my heart melted. And I said, do you mind if I touch you? And she said, no. So I went behind her and for 10 minutes, scratched her back as she wept. And I was really aware of, we are creatures who, when I think we isolate, for me, it's going within to meditate and connecting to my true power and hearing the voice of God by quieting my mind. But I don't believe we are to isolate from others. And every time I think about someone who lives alone, every time I pray for them, I say, God, right now, powerful beams of love surrounding them. Let them feel it right now, God. It's like the same when I pass a homeless person. I don't go, oh, poor them. I put my hands out, or one hand if I'm driving. I say, God, shower them with light and love right now. Your beautiful children need you. Just be with them right now. You know, and then all of a sudden your life is a constant force of love and doing good without, quote unquote, having to do a damn thing. Right. Absolutely. It's all energy. It's all energy. And it reminds me because of what I mentioned earlier around people somehow unconsciously playing the victim right now around I'm isolated, I'm in lockdown. And so when I talk about the incubation, there's beauty in the incubation. But the reality is that we're not isolated. We're not in lockdown. If you... If you exit the door of your home, you're going to see neighbors, you're going to see people walking by, you're going to actually open yourself to the opportunity of having someone like in your case, you know, scratch, you know, my back. But just to be able, again, it's about shifting the mindset. And where is this taking us? It's taking us into what you've been sharing with us all along around divorce. And to be able to shift that mindset, to be able to become more curious around exploring 
exploring. And just like this whole pandemic, like you're talking locked in, I've gotten so much done. I'm communicating more via Zoom. I'm doing more lives. You know, I'm honing my business because I was forced to, as opposed to being a victim, I'm like, oh, what can I do in this? I found an exercise class I do every day in the morning on my TV. Well, it's on my computer and then I match it with my TV. And I just roll out my mat in my guest house and I do it every day. I walk my dogs outside and say hi to people. I go bike riding with my daughters and then I connect with people via social media. And I have a very vibrant life and I'm not sitting here saying, Money's dried up. No money's coming in. My husband's not working. I'm in a divorce. I don't have as I normally do. That's all real. That's not what drives me. That's just a pile over there called divorce that I only pick a little bit off and eat what I have to when I have to. But what I love is I get to create my experience on the planet and I will not choose to spend one minute anymore in victim mode. It's a waste of energy. It really lowers your immune system. It breaks down your body. It can cause dis-ease in your body, which forms disease. So your mind tells your body how to act. I'm going to get the COVID virus. You're going to get it. I'm going to be healthy and thrive. You're going to be healthy and thrive. They're all working together and supporting each other. And so is the universe. The universe brings to us what we move towards and what we want. If we say things are going to get worse, the universe goes, make things worse. Like they're just supporting us. It's just energy. Right. It's all energy in the world. The universe, Mother Nature, is there to conspire for us, not against us. But it's us. We work against ourselves because of the mindset and how we've been operating. So I love how you continue to share this with us. Now, because you did mention earlier, you you know, my online course, I do understand you have an online course called For the Love of Divorce. So for those that are tuned in that may be interested in working with you or just your words alone have inspired them so they want to learn more. I know you mentioned the six pillars and as we're getting close to completion, we will not have enough time to cover all six. I know that you've already covered one with us, but I would love for you to cover the one that you mentioned around finding your tribe because it goes back into what you're sharing around. We can be incubated and there's beauty in that cocoon. However, we're not isolated. So do you want to talk a little further about that and how it shows up? I love that. Great. Yes. And so this is something that will show up in all of your life. As you ascend, as you open your heart, as you make new healthy choice, the toxic friends that you ran with or got drunk with or gossiped with fall off naturally because you're no longer in the same energy field with them. So as you ascend, you can become a victim going, no one likes me. I'm all alone up here. You know, I've lost everyone. Or you can go, oh. Who am I going to attract that's new? Those people served me. I served them. But as I evolve, you know, it's allowing yourself to look for new tribes. So with the divorce, I lost the eight families, married couples that we hung out with our kids for 20 years. And I go, okay, who makes my heart smile now? What friends? Here's how I think we pick friends when we're going through something painful. You pick only safe friends. That means friends who hold your heart in the palm of their hand. Same with family members. You don't choose old gossipy people. You're too precious and your pain is too real to pass it to someone who won't use it to support and love you only. So be aware of who you're choosing in your tribe. I only welcome in people now who are happy for me when I'm happy and thriving, who walk with me when I'm hurting but who hold my heart in the palm of their hand. So that's really beautiful. And it's neat to start allowing the other riffraff, it becomes, who no longer really serve you or support you. You know, to let that fall off without making it a bad thing or you've lost a friend, it's acknowledging yourself that you're evolving. And then that's what I do. Like with divorce, I had to find an attorney, a mediator, a therapist, a group of friends who held my heart in their hand. And so, you know, it's, it's really being conscious. I have a little man that stands guard at my mind in my brain and he stands guard and every thought comes and he has to look at it and say, is this serving Lee? Is this teaching her? Is it moving her forward? Or is she going to throw that in that loop to beat herself up? And he shuts the door on it. I only welcome in positivity, good hearted people people who will help me rise or who I can assist in rising and we're doing it together. Everything else is no longer welcome into my life. And as I'm entering into the dating field, I've met some pretty handsome fellas 
And I just check in with the energy. Is this who I want to share the rest of my life? Are they focused and living in their passion and happiness and established in what they're doing? Or are they having depression thoughts and at a crossroads? I'm not there. That was the old me, what I attracted. So just being aware of you are in charge of your experience, stand guard of your mind and welcome and only people who've got your back. I love that. And I love how you continue to highlight the energy and the importance of this energy and how you started off by sharing how, you know, you've come across or somewhere on your path, you've seen these handsome men as perhaps potentials, but then it goes beyond that, right? It's not just the physical, but you know, your energy, where are you? Because you are evolving and you want to make sure that you are with someone that is in alignment with you. And so with that, you're reminding me of something that I've been somehow having conversations with people, even with my own coach and resonance to therapy. And you mentioned the word therapy for those that are tuned in that are going through this or considering whatever that is, when it comes to therapy, there still seems to be some sort of taboo around, no, there's nothing wrong with me. Can you share with the listeners, why is therapy so important in the midst of all this that you're sharing with us? Oh, it's a lifeline. And I think it's a must. People, regular people who like you and are your friends are not trained from a neutral perspective with real tools to help you heal and to work through and to put a platform of listening. So often my therapist just listens with the ears of her heart and sees me in Zoom and she just listens and holds the space and I talk and I talk and I talk and then I take a breath and then my observer shows up and I would say, oh, Allison, Oh my goodness, I just needed to love myself. Oh, I wish I would have come to that sooner. I just needed to be there for myself. You know, and I'm having awareness on her in her time with her support. But so often if we can just be heard in a neutral way with gentle reminders, we can get back to our true selves. Every answer we ever need for any question is within. And it's literally when we can quiet our crazy ass minds So we can hear the answers. They're there. God's within us waiting for us to tap it. Absolutely. And it's also reminding me of when it comes to therapy, why it's, I mean, there's so many multiplicities of reasons why it's so important. But what's coming through for me right now is if that is skipped, and I'd love to hear also to your perception around this, Lee, If therapy is skipped in the midst of all this that you've been sharing with us, it's almost as if unconsciously or consciously, but I'll go with unconsciously, you will be attracting the same person that you were with. And so I would only imagine that if you are evolving, right, and that's really the core value right now for you, that you may not want to go back to where you were before, but forward thinking, Is there anything there that comes through for you around that? Well, yeah, you know, so what happened with my therapist is I said, you know, I want to look at myself, what I brought to this relationship. I don't want to repeat that. I want to heal that part of me so I don't have to use that defense mechanism anymore that added to the demise of my relationship. And she was like, what can you think of? Like, what's something that you did? And I got to pick something, which was railroading over my husband, cutting him off and becoming that stronger thing. And she was the one that helped me go way back to find the moment that I needed that skill as a child so I wouldn't get beaten. If I could rise up over my dad and get his attention, he could hear me. I wouldn't take the beating. And so she was able to help me unravel the origin of where that came from. So I can go in and hug that little girl that that happened to and love her and fill her up there. So I no longer have to react like a child as an adult because I'm taking care of that old hurt. And I wouldn't have gotten that on my own. She was able to help me unravel it. And I think, you know, I do do divorce coaching. I do life coaching as well as you. And the thing it is, is it doesn't matter what the topic is. It's when you listen with the ears of your heart and you allow God to be part of the process, organically, magically, the perfect things come up that serve that person. It's pretty amazing because then it's never about me, right? I'm not toot my horn. I'm like, I'm a vessel of information because I've tapped into the wisdom of the universe and I'm allowing it to come forward to serve the person who needs to hear it. That sounds like true surrender. Oh my gosh, there's nothing greater. Mm, I love that. 
Now, Lee, as we're coming into completion, for those that are tuned in right now, again, those that may be going through a divorce, thinking about getting a divorce, or perhaps are divorced and still suffering, or maybe there's that friend or family member going through that divorce, or people as myself, right? Healing and releasing from upbringing programming pertaining divorce. What takeaway do you want to leave the listeners with? So the thing I would say, the biggest takeaway is you were born perfect and whole and worthy of all of the love and abundance the universe has to offer. Then we grew up and people covered our bright light. And then our parents, our siblings, our teachers, people at work, everyone, boyfriends covered our bright light. And we have forgotten who we truly are. So just know that as you peel back the layers and you heal your old thoughts and you cut your limiting beliefs, that under is a perfect whole person and that that's the place where we can attract the partner God has created us to have. That's the place where we can have the love and the career. It's knowing your worth regardless of what your limited pea brain wants to tell you and connect to that. And I would say the best way is through breathing, through meditation. That's beautiful. Allowing God to choose for you, right? The ideal partner for you. And I think that's definitely part of such a beautiful way as we're coming into completion with everything that you've been sharing and educating us around. Now, Lee, for those interested in learning about you, where can they find you? So you guys, I would like to hear from you right now. So if you would pick up your cell phones, go to your text message area and you're going to put in the number 41242 and then you're going to go down where you type your word and you're going to write the word lee which is my name l-e-i-g-h and hit send you'll get a couple automated questions and then at the end you can sign up for a complimentary 15 minute phone call with me i am here for you And I mean that with all of my heart. You are not alone. I got you. Reach out to me and I'd be happy to connect with you as soon as possible. So I'm excited about that. So just text the word Lee to the number 41242. I have a website and it's once again my name, L-E-I-G-H dot L-A, Lee dot L-A. If you go there and you click the pink bar at the top, they can read all about my For the Love of Divorce online course. And of course, follow me on Instagram because I have inspirational and pretty hilarious and heart moving things, which is my name at Lee Keckner, L-E-I-G-H-K-O-E-C-H-N-E-R. And yes, I'm keeping my last name because I love who I have become from my relationship with David. Beautiful. Well, there we go. For all the listeners, you get a free 15 minute consultation with Lee. I think that's pretty remarkable. Well, Lee, it's been such an honor to have you join the conversation. Thank you, darling. It was my pleasure and honor to be here. And hello to your beautiful audience. I love you and I'm showering you with love and light. I take this opportunity to thank all the listeners for tuning in, my engineer, Ricky Reda, and producer, Mark Maxwell, and everyone at KPFK that supports Transforming Consciousness. For those interested in following me, you can follow me on Instagram under Transforming Consciousness. I leave you with the following quote for your contemplation of today's show. Some people believe holding on and hanging in there are signs of strength. However, there are times when it takes much more strength to know when to let go and to actually do it. This has been Transforming Your Consciousness with Vanessa Valdez. Till next time. Seems like the world has gone totally crazy. A global pandemic, tanking economy, social unrest, and mixed messages coming from leadership. With all this trauma, where do you turn for news and information you can trust? You turn to KPFK. For more than 60 years, KPFK has been here for you. Digging deep for the truth and fighting the good fight for those who need help the most. KPFK has always been there for you. Now we need your help. KPFK needs to raise more than $200,000 to keep the computers computing and the transmitter transmitting. Without your help today, we may be forced to turn the radio station off. Seriously. 
These are troubling times, but you can make a difference for us today by becoming a KPFK Sustainer Circle member. It's where you decide what you'd like to give KPFK each month. $10, $25, $100, or even $1,000, whatever is comfortable for you. When you give, you know you're keeping your favorite radio station on the air in Southern California. I'm Nita Valens from InterVision, encouraging you to become a KPFK Sustainer Circle member today. Your financial help is the only way we shall 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 help is the only